Today, we're talking about depreciation, and we're also going to talk about a little known secret about how to get past some of these depreciation issues and not even have to worry about depreciation on certain types of assets. So this question that, that I think is so important to talk on, because there's so many confusion and misunderstanding about what depreciation is, and especially for small business owners and those that are just getting started, they don't know what's, what, what depreciation is. And so I want to take some time to talk about what is depreciation, how do you do it, what do you need to know about it, and then what is that little secret so that you can get out of having to even need to worry about depreciation, especially for some of those smaller asset purchases. So first off, depreciation is essentially just taking the cost of an asset and spreading it out over time. And this is where, honestly, a lot of confusion comes. A lot of people think, I can go out and buy a piece of equipment, and I spend $100,000 on this piece of equipment, and I am guaranteed that I get a $100,000 deduction that year. Well, that's not always the case, and that's not how depreciation technically works. And so depreciation, again, is this process of getting an expense for an asset purchase. And so I think that that's important to understand. Typically, when you purchase an asset, you would you do what they call capitalize it. So I go out and buy a $100,000 piece of equipment. I'm going to capitalize that. And what does that mean? Is that means I put it on my balance sheet as an asset. Then once I've done that, then I can choose the type of depreciation I want to do. And that depreciation is taking that asset cost, the amount that I capitalized, and getting an expense for it. So getting an, taking an expense for the cost of that asset that shows up as an expense on my balance sheet. And so the typical types of property that can be depreciated would be machinery, equipment, buildings, fixtures, vehicles, furnitures, all those types of things are things that you can use depreciation for. And again, how does the typical process work? Purchase the asset, we capitalize it, which means that we put it on our balance sheet. And then during tax time, we take depreciation on that. We choose the depreciation method and then we expense a portion of that asset over time. Eventually the full asset gets depreciated, but it takes time to do that. And we'll talk about the different options and how maybe there is an option to get depreciation all in year one and what that might look like. Now, one thing to note is that land cannot be depreciated. So let's say you purchase a, a property for your business and there's a building on it and it's land, you own the land as well. The building and the fixtures and all those different things, those can be depreciated, but the value of the land is not a depreciable item. And so that's one thing that I want to talk about or want people to understand is that land is not depreciated, but the furniture, machinery, equipment, be buildings, vehicles, all those types of things obviously can be depreciated. So we talk about depreciation. There's kind of three main options for depreciation. And there's, there's, there's one that I just call regular depreciation. And this is where you depreciate a property over the course of anywhere from three to 39 years. So the IRS has different uh, regulations about different property types. So they might say a computer is a five-year asset. And basically they're saying like they expect computers to last five years. A vehicle might be a seven-year, a piece of equipment might be a 10-year, whatever it might be. The IRS has kind of regulations about what is the asset life of these different types of capital assets that you can purchase. And so with regular depreciation, we are spreading out that depreciation expense over time, over the course of three all the way up to 39 years, depending on the asset that we're depreciating. And the most typical method in the IRS eyes when it comes to what I call regular depreciation is called makers, M-A-C-R-S. And so that's makers depreciation. We then have something called bonus depreciation. And a couple of years ago, bonus depreciation means that we could purchase an asset and get 100% deduction in year one. But the past couple of years, that's been going down each year by year unless and it gets extended. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to go down and eventually go away. And for 2024, bonus depreciation is up to 60%. So you buy a $100,000 piece of equipment. And if you choose bonus depreciation, you can depreciate 60% or $60,000 of that all in year one in 2024. Now, in 2025, that 60% goes to 40% and then to 20% the next year and then down to zero the year after that, unless something gets extended. And the third depreciation option is something called Section 179 expensing. And in 2024, you can do what they call Section 179 expensing up to over $1.2 million in asset purchase. So again, this might be another great depreciation option. So when we talk about depreciation options, we have regular depreciation that's basically spreading out the expense for that asset purchased over three to 39 years, depending on the type of asset it is. We have bonus depreciation, which in 2024 is 60%. And then we have section 179 expensing, which allows you to take a full expense in year one, 
up to a maximum of, of uh, $1,220,000. That's the limit for 2024. So let's go through a basic example. Let's say that you purchase a computer. Now, let's say that computer purchase is $4,500. In 2024, so let's say you purchase that computer for $4,500, we have different depreciation options. If we do the regular option, which is a five-year asset, a computer is a five-year asset, we basically take that $4,500 we spent on that computer and we spread the cost of that and we take the expense for that over the course of five years. So we're not gonna get 4,500 all the way in year one when we purchased it. We're gonna get a portion of that 4,500 over the course of five years and eventually get that 4, 4,500 after five years. So that would be regular depreciation, maker's depreciation. If we decide to use bonus depreciation, we could take 60% of that in year one here in 2024. And so in that example, $4,500, computer purchase, 60% of that would be $2,700 that we could take in year one. And then we would depreciate the rest, the remaining portion of that over the course of five years. And then we have section 179. With section 179 expensing, we could potentially take the full deduction automatically here in year one of $4,500. So those are the kind of the options that we choose and talk to your tax accountant, and talk, to, talk to your tax preparer about what option, what depreciation option is the best. One thing to know about section 179 is that you cannot create a loss with section 179. So if your business is running at a loss, you're gonna to wanna to look at a different depreciation option for that. So let's talk about some rules around depreciation, and kind of two main rules that I think business owners need to know about. First, you gotta be in business, and two, depreciation begins when you place that asset in service. So first off, rule number one, must be in business. Basically it's the saying like, if I don't have a business, and I go out and buy a computer, and I go out and buy a desk, there's no deduction for that. You need to have a business. You need to be in business to be able to take a depreciation deduction. But most people know that. They know, okay, I don't get a deduction for just buying anything from a house, buying a new couch, TV, whatever it is, obviously. Where we see this most often, this must be in business rule, is if you are in startup mode or you're in a mode where you don't necessarily have a business yet, but you're getting it hooked up. Let's say that you're like, I want to start an online business. And so I'm going to go out and buy a, a, a desk. I'm going to go out and buy a laptop. I'm going to go out and buy a monitor for this desk, but I don't have a business yet. I haven't started it yet. I'm not generating revenue or have an actual in-service business. For those items, you want to make sure you're recording the cost and, and what you're spending on it and what your cost is, but you're not going to get an actual deduction for that or be able to depreciate that until you actually start business. So depreciations will start once business actually begins, but you do want to still be recording. When did you purchase it? What was the cost and all those? Because we want to have that on file so that once business does start, we can make sure we get capitalized and depreciate those items. So that's important. But we got to be in business. We have to be a business. Once business actually begins, that's when we can start that depreciation option. The second rule of depreciation is that depreciation begins when an asset is placed in service. And so we see this most often at the end of the year where people are trying to rush in and they're looking for a tax deduction. They need a new piece of equipment. So they're rushing to get that in. And so I'll give you an example. Let's say that you purchase a computer on December 15th. So you buy that computer December 15th. People say, well, I spent that money. I can get start depreciation in, in, in this year because I purchased it by December 15th. But let's add some more facts to that. You purchased the computer on December 15th, but then you sent it back because you needed to get all the software loaded onto it. So you sent it back because it was unusable until you had that software that you needed to, for, to be able to be used within your business. And then you got that computer back on January 5th. In this example, that computer would not be able to be placed in service until January 5th, when it is usable, when it is available for use in your business, actual use. So that's just something to consider. You know, if it's a vehicle, we want to drive it at least one mile before the end of the year for that to be placed in service this year. So you go out and purchase a, a new Escalade for your business and you do that on December 15th and it's back order and you're like, oh, it'll be here and you pay for it. You do all the finance and everything's done, but you don't get your vehicle until February or March of next year. That vehicle is not placed in service, even though you might have paid for it, paid 100% for it this year. It wasn't placed in service because you didn't have that vehicle. It wasn't available for use. So that's rule number two. The key thing when we talk about depreciation is we want to understand when does it begin? Because for those of us that might be buying things at the end of the year because we want to lower our income this year, it's important to know when does depreciation begins? Do we get the full depreciation for the year or not? And that's gonna, I'm going to say that depends. So if you have, if you're doing regular depreciation, makers, depreciation method like that, the IRS has this thing called rule, it applies these rules that they call conventions. And basically that means that depending on when you place that asset in service, 
you're going to, it will depend on how much of a deduction you get in year one. So if you place an asset in service in December 5th, you might not, and you're using regular depreciation, you might not get a full deduction for that in year one. You're going to get a partial deduction, and then you'll get the full year deduction going forward after that. You know, if you're utilizing bonus depreciation or section 179 expense, expensing, you get the full deduction for the year that you place it in service, regardless of what month it is. That's one of the benefits of bonus in section 179 is, is you get that added benefit to it. So hopefully that's helpful. Now I want to get into some of the details about, okay, how does depreciation work? And, and, and what does it mean when we look to sell assets? And, and how does that work? And, and where does depreciation go? So Let's look at this idea of selling a depreciated asset, an asset that we capitalize it on our asset, on our balance sheet, and then we depreciate it, whatever method we decided, but we depreciated it. And now we look to sell that asset. So first off, we're going to have a gain or a loss on that asset, gain or a loss. But in order to know our gain or loss, we need to know what our basis is in that asset. And basically is our basis is going to be our purchase price minus any depreciation we've taken. So let's go back to that example that we were using of a computer that costs four four thousand five hundred dollars. Let's say you purchase a computer for four thousand five hundred, and you take section one seventy nine expensing on that computer, and so you fully depreciate it. And then three years later, you sell that computer for two thousand dollars. In this example, our basis is zero because we purchased it for four thousand five hundred, but we did section one seventy nine of four thousand five hundred, which means our basis is zero. So if we sell that computer for $2,000, we're going to have a gain of $2,000. Now let's use that same example. But in this example, we used uh, regular depreciation makers, whatever it might be. And we took $1,500 of depreciation. So we bought it for $4,500 and we took $1,500 of depreciation. So now our basis in that is $3,000. If we now sell that computer for $2,000, we actually have a $1,000 loss. Our basis is $3,000. We sold it for $2,000 we have a $1,000 loss. So when we look at sell, selling a depreciated asset, and a lot of people ask this, it's like, well, Mike, what's the tax liability of selling this asset? We first need to find out what is our basis in that and then determine our gain or loss from that. This episode is brought to you by Taxum. At Taxum, we understand that saving taxes can be complex and overwhelming for business owners. That's why we're here, to be that tax strategist in your back pocket, ensuring that you pay the least amount of taxes as legally possible. With TaxZone, you receive a tax savings blueprint tailored to your business needs, unlimited access to our team of tax experts, and an annual one-on-one -on -one live consultation. You'll also have access to our comprehensive training with videos, downloads, templates, workbooks, guides, and so much more, along with our monthly live trainings to keep you informed and in control. Thousands of business owners across the country trust TaxZone. It's time you did too. Visit us now and take that first step towards paying the least amount in taxes as legally possible. There has never been a better time to join TaxSum. Do not forget about our 30-day money-back guarantee. We guarantee that we will present tax saving strategies that will, at a minimum, cover the cost of your subscription fee or your money back. This is your risk-free invitation to explore the benefits of TaxSum membership and how it can transform your approach to tax planning and savings. Go to TaxElm.com. That is T-A-X. ELM.com. Now back to the show. Now, many people, they hear about this idea of depreciation, capitalizing and appreciating. And they're like, why don't you just expense immediately? This seems like a lot of work. And what happens if I go out and buy a, a cell phone for $500 or I go out and buy a $600 desk? Do I have to go through all of this process to do that? And here is this little known policy that we can put into place. And this is very powerful, especially for small business owners. It's something called a capitalization policy. And this is a safe harbor that the IRS has approved and put in that basically says that if you have a capitalization policy in place, you can expense immediately any asset purchases that cost $2,500 or less. So you buy an asset that costs $2,500 or less, you can expense it immediately without having to worry about capitalizing and depreciating it or doing any of that. You just expense it immediately and move on. So let's go through an example to kind of put this in place. Let's say you buy two computers for $4,400. means each computer was $2,200. Typically, we're thinking, okay, got to capitalize it, put it on my balance sheet, and I'm going to determine a depreciation method and get an expense for that. The computer purchases over time or section 179, whatever it is I decide. But if we have a capitalization policy in place, the purchase of each individual asset was under $2,500 which means that we can expense it immediately without having to put it on our balance sheet, without having to worry about depreciation or anything like that. And this is very powerful because it takes 
the time and effort and, and the hassle and the work involved when we do tax prep and, and, and keeping our books straight and doing all that, we can just expense these items immediately as long as you have a capitalization policy in place. Now, another key thing to remember is that this is per asset. So I gave you that example. We bought two computers for $4,400. Many people will be like, Mike, but that's over $2,500. But each asset was under that $2,500 mark. And so that's what's important in this situation. This is on a per asset situation. So capitalization policy can be super powerful for small business owners to not have to worry about depreciation, to not have to worry about capitalizing an item, putting it on the balance sheet and going through all of that process. Now you might be saying, great, but how do I put a capitalization policy in place? It's relatively easy. First off, you have to have a capitalization policy, a written document that says, here are the parameters of what qualifies under this capitalization policy. And typically that's just a document that you put in your corporate books, you sign, you put on file and saying, here's our policy, it's in place for our business, put it on your corporate books, have it be part of your annual board meeting. And the other key thing is that you get to choose the dollar amount. The max you can choose is $2,500. But if you want to choose for whatever reason, a number lower than that, you can. Now, the key thing is that once we put this capitalization policy in place, we have to follow this for every single asset purchase. So we can't just say, well, I'm going to capitalize and depreciate this asset that I bought for $2,000. But this one over here that I bought for $1,800, I'm going to expense immediately. And we can't pick and choose. Once this capitalization policy is in place, whatever dollar amount we go with a max of $2,500, we have to stick to that. But that should be relatively easy. That should be very simple. That makes process your bookkeeping easy. Under $2,500, expense immediately. Over $2,500, we go through the process. We put it on our balance sheet. We capitalize it. We depreciate it. Go through time to do that. Now, again, what do we want to do is we want to make sure we're keeping invoices, receipts, as always, to kind of back up these items, especially if you buy multiple assets under one charge. So again, let's go through, let's say we go to Walmart and we buy five computers for $2,000. We go to checkout, that's $10,000. Now, when we go to do our bookkeeping, we're going to see a transaction come through that says Walmart, $10,000. Now, you might be thinking, okay, capitalize and depreciate it. But remember, each asset was only $2,000, which is under the $2,500 mark. So in reality, we want to have that receipt as always anyways. We also, more importantly, want to have that receipt here so that we can expense that immediately because we're following our capitalization policy of under $2,500 per asset. So each as each computer was $2,000, all expensed immediately. Even though the total was 10, each asset individually under there was under that, that threshold mark. Now, if we bought three computers for $2,000, then we bought a third one or a fourth one for $4,000, we can expense immediately, use our capitalization policy on the computers for $2,000, but that computer that we bought for $4,000, that one we have to capitalize, we have to depreciate. And then the final item, so have a capitalization policy in place, and we go through this in tax and have templates and documents that you can use to, to easily put this in place in your business. So the first one's have that capitalization policy in place. The second one is we simply just have to make an election on your tax return. We have to make an election that says, hey, we have the, we're using the de minimis safe harbor for capitalization policy in place, put it in there so that the IRS knows that. And then when we make, make these asset purchases that are under $2,500, we just record them on our books. We can either create a new, put them under office expenses if it's something like a $500 phone or something like that. Or if it's something like we're, we're buying equipment or small tools and things like that, we can create a new expense. It's a small tools and equipment that would be under that $2,500 mark that we put them on our balance sheet. So that is one of the most powerful things, every business owner should have a capitalization policy in place that we don't have to worry about this. Now, the, the capitalization policy, the diminished part that the IRS used to have, that number used to be 500. So that means that you could always have a capitalization policy in place, but that number used to be 500. Now it's 2,500. And so it makes it so much more powerful. So let me revisit kind of where have we been. This concept of depreciation can often be confusing for small business owners. And essentially what it is, it's just taking the expense for any asset purchases over time. And so things that can be depreciated are machinery, equipment, buildings, vehicles, furniture, all those types of things. One thing that can't be depreciated is land. And so I also want to, in this case, also warn people that don't go out and buy these different things just to get a tax deduction. Make sure that if you're buying a vehicle, if you're buying equipment, if you're buying machinery, furniture, whatever, you're doing it because you actually need it in your business. Don't go out and buy things just for a tax deduction. So that's what depreciation is. When we talk about the options for depreciating an asset, so we buy an asset, say a piece of equipment for $25,000. $25, we're going to put that on our balance sheet as an asset. And then when it comes to tax time, we're going to depreciate it. And depending on our depreciation method, that's when we get the expense for it. 
and that might be spread over spread out over three to 39 years. It might be expensed immediately, depending on the type of depreciation method we have. And there's kind of three main depreciation methods I like to talk about. The first one is regular depreciation. And in the IRS eyes, they'd probably call this makers, M-A-C-R-S. And this is where we just take that expense, that depreciation expense, over the course, depending on the type of asset, over the course of three to 39 years. Again, depending on the type of asset is going to determine what type of class it is. And that's going to determine what that depreciation schedule looks like. The other option is bonus depreciation. In 2024, we can take 60% of bonus depreciation in, the, in year one, and then the rest would be depreciated over time. And then there's section 179, which is where we can take 100% of certain asset purchases in year one up to a maximum of just about $1.2 million in 2024. So again, a basic example, purchase a computer for $4,500. If we're using makers regular depreciation, we're going to take the expense, we're going to take an expense for that 4500 over the course of five years because a computer falls in a five-year asset class. So we're going to take that $4,500 expense over the course of five years. If we do bonus depreciation, we're going to take 60% in year one and the rest over the course of five years. And if it's section 179, we can potentially take all 4500 in year one and get that expense in, in year one using section 179. Remember, when we talk about depreciation, there's two main rules. First, you got to be in business. And second, depending, depreciation begins once that asset is placed in service. So again, this is important. Placed in service means that it's available for use in your business. When does depreciation begin? If you're doing bonus or section 179, you can get whatever that full bonus or section 179 expense deduction is in year one, regardless of which month you put in. So you put something in in December 15th, put it in service, it's available for use. You get that full deduction that year for whatever method it is. If you're using makers, the IRS has this, this rule called conventions, which means that based on the month that you put that asset in service, you might have a limited year one, but then you'll just go back to the regular in year two, three, and four and beyond. Remember, if you're selling a depreciated asset, you're going to have a gain or loss. And in order to determine your gain or loss, we first want to determine what is your basis in that, that asset. And so basis is going to be your purchase price minus any depreciation is your basis. And so if you sell it for sell an item, an asset that's been capitalized and depreciated, if you sell it for more than your basis, you have a gain. If you sell an asset for less than your basis, you have a loss. Simple as that. And then finally, what we talked about is the one thing that I think every business owner should have in place in their business is a capitalization policy. You basically put a capitalization policy in place, put it on your corporate books, put it on record, and then add a add a, a, a election on your tax return that takes that that uh, that tells the IRS, hey, we're taking advantage of the capitalization policy. And once you do that, basically it says that any asset purchase that you make, where the single asset is twenty five hundred dollars or less, you're going to expense immediately. We're not doing one seventy nine. We're not doing bonus. We're not doing any depreciation. We're not doing anything on our balance sheet. If we purchase an asset under twenty five hundred dollars, we're expensing it immediately. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this answers some questions around. What is this depreciation? Because I think so many business owners get flustered, get frustrated, and, and hard. it's sometimes hard to understand, like, okay, if I purchase this piece of equipment, what, do I get the deduction in year one? I know when I first started a business at the age of 14, I was buying things. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy this new computer for $800, whatever it was at that time. And I was good. I get that deduction in year one. And I'm like, oh, what's this depreciation thing? I started to learn about depreciation. I'm like, oh, so if I go out and spend $100,000, it's not guaranteed that on a piece of, new piece of equipment, it's not guaranteed that I get that full hundred thousand dollars in year one. Now, depression, depending on the asset type and all these different things, it might be, but it's not guaranteed. And that's where you want to look through the depreciation methods, the type of property that you're purchasing, and go from there. So, hopefully, this was helpful. Again, as we get closer to year end, as we get to this mid year and closer to year end, we want to be thinking about these things. And definitely, now is the time to start buttoning up your books and buttoning up this idea of a capitalization policy and saying, okay. If I haven't set a capitalization policy yet, 2024, that's going to be the year I do it. Set up that capitalization policy and, and follow that capitalization policy for the whole year. Look at any prior asset purchases and then obviously going forward for the rest of the year, get that capitalization policy set up, implemented, and, and rolling through the exact practice of it. So hopefully this was helpful. I want to thank you for listening to another episode. And if you love what we do here, please like, share, leave a review on wherever you listen to us. And remember, our goal for you is for you to pay the least amount in taxes as legally possible. This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review and share with other business owners. 
You can find previous episodes and more information at www.taxsavingspodcast.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.